Welcome to the show. As always, you'll be on the drill. The latest on COVID-19, so let's, let's get to it. As of now, we're... There is breaking from... The first dose clinic will be held for 5,000 registered partners in, on Tuesday. We'll be held in American Bank Center on Charlotte Boulevard. The second dose will take place on Friday, March 5th at 9 a.m. at the uh, Richard and Bocher Regional Fairgrounds on Terry Shane Boulevard, Robstown, Texas. But enough of that. Let's get to the latest statistics. State cases. No new cases. 62. 32,464 total. 5343. Total cases. Still 62. We're now up to 37,807 total cases for today. Three new deaths, which now brings up the total of 717. Hospitalized, 6221. Currently a hospital, 74. ICU for those hospitals, 29. And 35,997 have recovered, getting close to 36,000. Government of those patients were positive for COVID-19 on narrow rail and have met the criteria for being released from quarantine from, from thir 13 to 14 days. That's the criteria. If you're, if you are, if you have COVID, you need to be quarantined. No buts. So if you have COVID, you need to get the vaccine right away. And if you're experiencing any side effects, then you can take Tylenol. If you have not gotten the vaccine, well, then you still need to be quarantined. You still need to get it. Like experts say, if you have gotten the COVID, if you didn't get, if you didn't, if you are tested positive for COVID, and you didn't get the vaccine. Now is an excellent time for you to get that COVID vaccine. It's now an excellent time for you to. It's now an excellent time. So, that's the latest case of COVID-19. I mean, we're now getting close to 38, 36, 36,000. Just 13 left, and then, uh... I mean, just look at the dashboards. Two million, two point, two million, two hundred ninety-two thousand ninety-seven cases. But the biggest ever is in California, with uh, with Los Angeles County being up to up to uh, up to the six-digit numbers. Just try to understand. When I'm giving you these tips, you have to follow these tips, and then and I may tell you them to you again, but just but just understand. Like as always, you need to make sure that you're that you have masks. If you don't have a mask, you you can go you can go to every store you can. They have masks, seven bucks. If you don't have a mask, you can you can get one from a neighbor. You can get some. From, you can get some from a neighbor or from your friend. And the mask has to be at the bridge of the nose, and not down here nor down here. I mean, the main reason why they do it down here is because they're trying to breathe through their nose. Listen, I get that, but. But there's no excuse.
That's the whole reason why people are wearing their masks like this and in their chin, because they're trying to breathe through their mouth also. Because it's hard to take off that mask. It's hard to breathe through that mask. I understand. So this is a big reminder here. Six feet apart. No standing on the sideline. And even if you're in sporting events, you need to start wearing masks every single day. At sporting events, grocery stores, wherever you go, public places, you need to wear a mask. Wash your hands every 20 seconds through warm water, hot, warm water and soap. It's not that hard. We gotta keep, we gotta stop germs from spreading. The mask can help reduce the spread by 80%. If you have face shields, I don't I mean I think they can allow that, but according to research, it's too exposing. Now, if you have a medical condition or with asthma and or another medical condition or under, or under ages of ten, you cannot wear a mask. But if they ask you, just follow those orders and make sure that you follow, still follow those social distancing protocols. Also, lastly, don't listen to those anti-maskers who believe that the data is fake. The data is not fake. The media report on this the media report on this and And uh, it's real. Try to understand that. Later in this broadcast, Buck Days is back. It has been closed for years since the COVID. But what can you expect? We'll tell you about that later. But there's more. Give me a break when we come back, including Jim Wells County, who is still without water. What? What is the solution about all of this? We'll tell you. I'll tell you. All that's in a moment. With the big freeze that happened weeks ago, Jim Wells County is still under that water boiler noise. But there is a solution. They just brought that. They just bought the replacement pipe from Corpus, and it should be up and running by tomorrow morning. And until then, we could be able to see Jim Wells County in water. That's the best solution. The pump from one of the most important to Corpus is on its way to. To Benavides. Should have one up and up and running. And as for the rest of the uh, water services, all have been restored since the since that big freeze, after that freeze, all the water has been restored and everything's smoothly and going back to normal. And still, Benavides is still without, and uh... And the sheriff at Benavides says that the they have not been able to push water. That's right. So if you live in Jim Collins, Wells County, I pray that the uh, the water, you get that water.
And coming up on March 8th on Monday, there's going to be a winter storm brush cleanup. That began, and also because of that, there's going to be a, a brush cleanup that's been happening during the big freeze. I would love to show you this map, but I'm going to explain it to you without showing it. The blue areas represent the solid waste crews. The red areas represent debris. So, keep your brush out of the ditches and out of the ditches. Don't be, put, don't be getting your brush into the ditch. Can't have that happen, otherwise you could get in trouble. So what happens when you put your brush in the ditch? We'll find out right now. But how can, how can you, like, we're going to tell you how you can stop this from eroding when you return. Before the break, we meant, I mentioned to you that the, uh, that coming up next week, Corpus Christi is going to be doing deep freeze brush cleanup and all that. Like I told you before, you need to keep those ditches, keep the, keep the brush out of the ditches. Well, how can you do that? You need to use rocks, wares, and fumes. It's a small dam-like structure that slows down the flow of water in the ditch. Next, use great stabilizing structures. Like a treated wood structure, GL textile and forced glass chute, concrete blocks, and kettle panel structure. Embrace bank recreation. Deploy bioengineering techniques. Just try to do that. And in Padre Island, neighbors are helping out. Because of that big freeze, with shuttles and all that kind of stuff. So I, th so good job, Audrey Allen, for all your great work. Shrimp Poemi makes a comeback this year. So, if you're looking for some great shrimp here, this epidemic. Absolutely. So if you're planning on going there like I might be going, you need to make sure that you have a mask and practice social distancing and wash your hands. If you don't want to do that, that's your choice. I'm just trying to remember, we're all playing it safe here. Going back to the food break. It's year two, and now the crawfish cook-off and tasting is returning to the second year in March. Yummy! So if you're on a taste with some great crawfish this month, you're going to be in luck. 
I cannot wait to eat some great crawfish. Crawfish gumbo. Crawfish sauteed. Crawfish is the great food of life. You can boil it, bake it, saute it. There's a crawfish gumbo, a crawfish boil, crawfish pie, crawfish gumbo. Well, that's about it. Now, if you were in Holly, you may realize there was a car accident causing a power outage. We don't know what caused that accident. We know who we know who crashed that, but uh, the power could be coming back on, and uh, we'll know more. And the pandemic, and this pandemic is not slowing down for the Moody High School cheerleader. Here's my good, here's my good friend Jeff Dubroff. Like I saw, there was no, there was some social distancing, but but uh, but not that I'm worried about. Now, a couple weeks ago, if you were looking for those generators, the generators are sky high prices from like four four hundred dollars, so. You may not be in luck for finding those great power, great generators. Otherwise, you're getting your money's worth. <laughs> and that's the best way to prepare for hurricane season. You need to make sure that you have a, uh, that's a great way to prepare for hurricane season. You need to, if you're going to prepare for hurricane season, I recommend you do that right before it starts. Do that the following times you need. You need to make sure that you have a plan. And plan it out, have a drill beforehand so that when hurricane hits, you make sure you know where you're going when the power's out. And as always, during this pandemic, you need to make sure that you have masks, stay socially distanced, and have essential supplies, food, water, clothing, shelter, all that stuff. Because this hurricane's like the big bad wolf. Trying to understand that. When we return, Buck Days is coming up. We're gonna tell you what you what what you need to expect when you're going to the Buck Days Festival. When we return, are you ready for Buck Days? Yeah, I'm ready for Buck Days. One of them. I'm glad you mean that, Scooby. Because great news, the Buck Days is coming back. But. But, with new rules and restrictions because of COVID, here's the list of events that's going to be happening this year because of the things what to expect. April 29th to May 9th, it's the Stripes Carnival, for those who live in Corpus Christi. April 30th to May 1st, it's the PBR Velocity Tour Buck Days Shootout. May 1st to May 2nd, at 1 p.m., Wings over South Texas. Could be chicken wings, turkey wings, I'm not sure. May 2nd, Navy Army Night Parade and a parade. Pachanga, May 6th through 9th, what do you have Christmas in the middle of the light? College night for uh, presented by Valerio. Military first responder night. May 8th, Robotics Rodeo. Poor Corpus Christi night, and some events 
such as the barbecue in the bay and the Buck Days Junior Parade are postponed and will resume next year and the concert return next year as well. All tickets are going to sell in a few weeks and we're going to tell you about the full COVID-19 safety plan right here. Because if you're, if you're trying to figure out the safety plan, this is the show for you. And I'm here to help you out. I don't know why I'm smiling, but... Well, that's the event plan. So, let's go back to the safety guidelines. Let's go to the safety guidelines. Everyone in order is required to wear face covering at all times. Entering and inside per city mandated in primary except when actually eating or drinking. Encourage all attendants to wear masks at all times and signage around all the venue reinforces this message. Social distancing. It's promoted to the best extent possible. All areas but not limited to venue entrances and access to enclosed space and to prevent. Venue seating restroom sewer services area. When social distancing cannot be achieved, steps will be taken to install physical barriers such as plexiglass at concession stands. And if I'm on a hygiene signage and health screening, it has to be done. So just try to remember, if you're going out to have a great time, you need to make sure that you are following those safety protocols. Because Yours truly might be there for a great, give me a break, talking with all of the great, and even me, talking with Katya and my good, and some of my good friends from Channel 6 who I met, or like on Facebook, so we know what's going to happen. I'll be, back, I'll be back in a moment, the preview of Wednesday is give me a break. And it's going to be one that you do not want to miss. So getting off topic of the buck days and all. Wednesday, this is going to be a real doozy. Coming up Wednesday, I'm going to expose Rock City for not enforcing social distancing. Because when I saw there, they were not socially distanced. I was socially distanced. Those people were not. There was no social distancing. The, the guy who played the drums on stage, he was in his plexiglass and all that stuff. He did a great, they did a great job with the place class, but there was no social distancing for the crowd. No limits, no, no spaces, no social distancing. Why is that? Wednesday, I am going to go talk to them and get to the bottom of this investigation on why churches do not do social distancing. That's Wednesday. And with that in mind, that's it for now for Give Me a Break Monday. We'll see you again tomorrow, we can make Wednesday for the ex for for the exposure of Rock City Church. And why they do not socially distance. I'll see you then. Good night, everyone.